Hey there, how are you guys doing? I'm going to show you a simple technique in WinDebug to detect .NET memory leaks. Okay, let's get into it. So I have loaded up WinDebug with a memory dump that contains a memory leak. I have written a program in which I've created a whole bunch of objects and I've just let it linger in memory and I've taken a memory dump of that computer program to illustrate the problem that if you have a .NET memory dump with a memory leak, how do you find these objects? So I have put the source code for this program on GitHub if you would like to look at it. It's only a couple of lines of code. Um, you don't really need to look at it. It's just used to illustrate the problem of how to find objects in .NET memory dumps. Now, technically, you can't have a memory leak in .NET. That's true. What we are talking about when we say memory leak are objects that have references to them, but we don't know that they exist. Um, this often happens due to the way .NET works, where certain things like events, certain things like uh, certain kinds of references are really complex to decipher in code. And so objects linger, even though we think that they should have been removed. So I'll show you a technique how to just search through the memory, find these objects, find the roots and prove that these objects are really the, the leaks that are appearing when we look at the memory of the program. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to ensure that you have uh, symbols uh, configured. Um, you can check out my video uh, in the playlist below where I have a short video on how to set symbols, but you can also just Google how to set symbols. I'm going to skip this for this video. Um, we don't really need to go through that. Uh, but you must have your symbols loaded because in a .NET memory dump, uh, the symbols are very important in order to decode the .NET objects. So let's start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type load by SOS CLR. So what this does is it loads the SOS plugin, uh, which we are going to use to decode .NET. You can Google on the internet what exactly is the uh, SOS plugin. Um, I have a video in this playlist in which I use the SOS plugin to do uh, .NET memory debugging. Do check it out if you want to learn more about the SOS plugin. I'm going to use it in order to dump memory. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type uh, dump heap minus stat. Okay. So what dump heap minus stat does is that it builds a histogram of objects and it gives you the count and the size of the um, total number of objects in memory. We are going to use this to try to find our memory leak. So what we are going to do is uh, we're going to look through this list and we're going to find objects that are, have an excessive high count or an excessive size, one, one of the two. I have conveniently named uh, the leaking object in this memory dump as uh, leaky data. Now, the reason I did that is so that I could spot it really easily but you might not have the luxury of having a very descriptive name for the object that's leaking. However, to show you this technique, um, I chose to do it this way. In real life, uh, you probably are looking for an object that is um, that you have a count that is really, really excessive or a size that is really excessive and it may be really difficult. Um, I will make a video in future about how to target and find those objects using more advanced techniques. But for this video, I'm just going to stick to um, this line of reasoning where you kind of spotted that you have an object in memory that is uh, it is not supposed to be there. And we're just going to drill down and find uh, what is the root of that object. I'm going to give it a start with leaky data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, first uh, row. Uh, this is the uh, method table. So what the method table does is that uh, it is the uh, description of what this object is in memory. Um, I'm declared this as a class, so the method table type would be class. When I click on it, uh, what WinDebug does is WinDebug runs a command. Uh, what it does is it runs dump heap slash D, uh, the method table, and it gives the address of the method table. And what it does is it dumps out every single instance of this object in memory. What I can do with this is I can see all the instances 
I can click on one of them like a sample. So I'm just going to click on, on one of these objects. And what it's going to do is it's going to dump object and dump out the body of that object. What I did, I created uh, two properties for this object, one called some data and another called some event. So it's going to show me the value of some data and some, in some event. Uh, that's not really Im important for now. What I want to do is I'm going to take this memory address right here and I'm going to do a uh, command called GC root. So what GC root does is that it takes the memory address of the object and then it walks it backwards to see what is the originator of this address. It will stop at the first memory address created by the app domain. In my case, it'll be the object leaky app. So leaky app is the main. So it, what it's saying here is leaky app, the main, owns leaky data, the array, which owns leaky data inside the array. So one unique root, that means that this object is alive. It won't get garbage collected. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run dump heap minus stat again. And I'm going to choose uh, a different object um, to show you a different uh, GC handle. So I'm going to choose the uh, event handler. Now, the reason I'm going to choose the event handler is because uh, usually uh, when objects are lingering longer than they should, uh, it's probably something to do with an event handler. So I'm going to show you a sample. So if I dump out the event handler, same thing, it's going to show me the instances of each. I'm just going to pick one as a sample and the event handler for this object over here which is my leaky handle i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to gc root the event handler and what it shows me is that leaky app owns leaky data the array that owns uh, instances of leaky data and each leaky data owns uh, one uh, event handler and the target of the event handler i'm going to click here and i'm going to get the target of the event handler over here and i'm going to uh, gc root it and you will notice that the event handler is owned by the system event handler. So this pattern of an object owning an event handler, which is owning a leaky event handler over here, this is a very common pattern when you have uh, memory leaks to do with event handling. So if I walk deeper into this, I will find that the number of subscribers and the number of subscriptions to the event handler will just keep growing and this is one of the most common pattern that you have uh, for why objects are uh, leak. So once we have seen the uh, GC root, um, the technique to find memory leaks is actually just doing this over and over again. Um, if you are able to pick an object which you know is causing a problem and you're able to get the roots, uh, you will be able to see all the roots here and make an intelligent decision whether that's the cause of the memory leak. Um, there is no real way in WinDebug to say this is a leak versus an object that genuinely should exist. But this is probably better than nothing, trying to guess what the object is. Um, there is a few more things we can do. So there is a, another command you can use called ee heap. And what ee heap does is that it, it dumps out the total amount of memory in the uh, various heaps that .NET is using. I won't cover this that much in this video. This is a bit more complex where um, you have programs where you don't even know whether it's a .NET memory leak. Um, I'll go through this in, in a future video. It's a, it's a bit more advanced. Um, but there's also the concept that the different generations of .NET um, have different size heaps. So in a nutshell, what happens is that in .NET, .NET makes three heaps in order to allocate memory, which is generation 0, 1, and 2, and objects that survive garbage collection move up the generation. There is another heap called the large object heap, where objects that are bigger than a certain size, they go inside that heap. If you GC root those objects, they work the same way as any other object, it will show you the, the root. So if you find objects in the large object heap that is too large, then uh, you can actually GC root and find out where the root is. In .NET, if an object has been marked by the garbage collector as safe to clean up, but the object has a finalizer on it, then the object won't be cleaned up until the finalizer has completed. 
If you suspect that there are a lot of objects that are being finalized but they have not completed, you can actually check the uh, finalizer queue by just uh, running the command finalizer queue and uh, I think it's finalize queue and what will happen is that it will dump uh, all the objects that are safe for, final for cleaning up but their finalizers have not completed. If we GC root these objects, they will say that the objects are alive. And they are alive not because that their references are valid, it's because their finalizers have not finished. So I'll show you an example of that. I'm just going to dump uh, the first object that I see over here. So it is a safe file mapping handle. So I'm going to uh, dump out this object right here. And I'm going to uh, GC root this object. There we are. So I GC rooted this object and um, we'll see something a bit, a bit interesting. This object is held by the uh, SB, uh, SBCS code page encoding, which is held by a stream reader. But the thing is that uh, this is not being held by the app. So what has happened is that um, I'm going to put all at the back. Oh, sorry, I'm going to put all in front. <laughs> there we are. I don't know why you got to put all in the front so what's going to happen is that it's going to dump out all the uh, the roots and we're going to see that the roots are not being held by the app this means that this object has been marked for garbage collection but its finalizer has not completed so those are some of the techniques that are used to find memory leaks um, I will go in depth with the e heap in a future video and probably also uh, a video on how to debug the large object heap. The large object heap is it's just a heap but it usually contains objects that are far larger so they're usually arrays or strings so I thought it would be a bit more it's a bit more complex than trying to debug just regular objects but this is the technique I use let me know in the comments below if you know this technique. Uh, let me know if you want more videos on uh, .NET debugging. And definitely let me know your thoughts on this video. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Subscribe if you haven't already. That lets me know what kind of videos to make. That lets me know um, how, how much people like these videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up. That tells me if I'm doing a good job. Give me a thumbs down if you think it's bad. It's up to you. Uh, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and give me topics to uh, that you want. Uh, I will be making a topic about the uh, EE heap, but just let me know what other kinds of debugging videos you like. Well, until next time, I'm High Voice signing out.